Channel the First in a new series of the London programme uncovers scandal in the world of greyhound racing. This is the story of Danny Damnier, one of Britain's top greyhound owners who claims to have close connections to the Saudi royal family. So we say congratulations to owner Danny Damnier and trainer John McGee. Danny Damnier approached me at the bar at Hackney Stadium one evening and suggested that I could earn well if drug tests uh, done on his dogs and disappeared or were not sent on to the proper authorities. And this is also the story of the company directors who put a lucrative deal before the integrity of the sport. Why did you try and cover up allegations of bribery and corruption against Mr Damnier and not report them to the NGRC? Tonight, the London programme exposes the biggest scandal to rock greyhound racing in years. Hackney Stadium in East London. When owners Brent Walker were forced to sell, it was destined for closure and redevelopment as a shopping centre. But Robert Parker, top bloodstock agent and ex-Lloyds broker, had a different vision. Parker wanted to rejuvenate Hackney and attract a new upmarket clientele. He set up his own company, Fleetfoot Racing Limited, and put together a consortium of blue chip city investors, including Coots, Samuel Montague, and Kleinwart Benson. This promotional photo on the day of the launch shows Princess Anne's Greyhound with Robert Parker and Stephen Welton of Henderson Venture Capital, the major investors in the consortium. We had to sell Greyhound Racing to them, and as I believe Greyhound Racing is a brilliant business with a great future. Obviously, we sold it to them. They wanted to achieve a market leader in the field, and um, the intention was to put everything into Hackney so that it was absolutely perfect, and uh, it would become the market leader and make a lot of money. After years in the doldrums, Greyhound Racing has begun to take off again. In the last five years alone, attendance figures have risen by nearly 50%, while annual turnover from betting is now £2 billion. Parker persuaded his city backers that investment in his ambitious plans would quickly reap huge dividends. The consortium took over on October the 5th last year. Danny Damnier was one of the first owners attracted to the new-look Hackney Stadium. I had never actually met Danny Damier before we took over Hackney. I'd heard of him, obviously. He was one of the biggest owners in the country. Um, he sponsored races all over the place, outside of Hackney. And uh, he had a top-class string of dogs. And obviously, good dogs attract crowds. Damier owns 30 dogs, many of them costing £20,000 or more. Through his company, Middle Eastern Group PLC, he sponsored races not just at Hackney, but also at Wimbledon and Reading. Danny's a big punt, uh, it always has been. I've known Danny for many years. I mean, uh, his average bet would be a thousand pounds. Normally, he backs his own dogs uh, or, or other dogs from the same trainer, the same kennel. Uh, but, uh, you know, he was, a, he was a good punter, Danny. He must have lost a lot of money gambling over the years. Certainly lost to me. Owners like Damnier were vital to the success of the track and Fleetfoot's management welcomed him with open arms. The stadium's new restaurant became his second home. Danny was a very flamboyant host. He would often invite people to dinner or invite people to join him at his table, buying champagne, having chocolates and flowers delivered from Harrods, buying vintage champagne to impress various guests. Daniel's companies, Middle Eastern Group PLC and Global Finance Limited, soon began offering to invest in Hackney. Daniel started by sponsoring races, pledging over £100,000 for 1994. He also agreed to pay £100,000 to take all the perimeter advertising. And then his attention turned to the tote board, which hadn't worked for years. We worked it out that it would cost about £250,000 to turn it into a state-of-the-art electronic system. And Danny snapped that up as if it was an absolute bargain because he was going to sell the advertising on to Saudi Airlines. He seemed quite well placed to do that because he told me that he owned all the electronic advertising around Piccadilly Circus. Val Clark was at that time setting up a deal with Sky Television to broadcast Greyhound Racing weekly from Hackney. 
Discussions were at a sensitive stage when Damnu got involved. As soon as Danny knew that we were involved in a television deal, he became very enthusiastic and wanted to be involved in it, and in fact said that he would pay for the production costs, which were Fleetfoot's responsibility. So we were talking about a sum of £500,000, which was a lot of money. All these offers had been made within a matter of weeks, but before any of them were signed, sealed and delivered, Daniel's company Global Finance came up with yet another astonishing offer. He offered £13.5 million for the track. The consortium was delighted, especially Stephen Welton, director for Henderson's, the main investors. Suddenly after three months of opening to get an offer which had given them a huge profit straight away, um, they were obviously very, very keen on it and supportive and... Um, you know, I remember Stephen Welton sort of saying to me that um, Danny was like Father Christmas suddenly appeared, you know, and um, was going to sort of solve all his problems. Fleetfoot thought they'd hit the jackpot. The stadium's costs were spiralling, but its income was just a fraction of that promised. The offer of 13.5 million was almost twice the amount they'd spent on the track so far. But while Danny's offers were captivating the boardroom, out on the track a more sinister side of the man was emerging. The London programme has discovered evidence that Damnia was attempting to bribe officials and trying to fix races. Hot favourite for this heat, Druids El Prado, two to one on favourite. Oh, here we go. With Druids El Prado, a Damnia owned Red, dog, was the favourite in the semi final of the Middle Park Stakes on February the 16th. Druids El Prado closing all the time, but Anne Hit Blaze, too strong, Anne Hit Blaze wins this one. Druids, Druids El Prado only came second. Damnia was desperate to win the final. He approached head groundsman Eric Dinas for help. Damn, drove in with his car and called me over. He said, um, I want you to knock the dogs over, the other five dogs in the final. I went, I just looked at him, I said, Danny, you cannot do that. Uh, he said, I'll give you the gear. I said, no. He said, I'll give you some money now to get on with. I said, no, no way I'm having anything to do with that. What did he mean by the gear to knock the dogs over? Well, he wanted to give me dope, dope the dogs. The final, which is worth £5,000 to the winner. Very valuable price for a puppy. Oh, we go. Dinas the claims Damnia was asking him to drug all the, the other outside. five Jeff runners in the race to make sure his dog run. came first. In this case, Druids El Prado won the final and there's no suggestion the race was fixed. Up on the, inside, Druids El Prado gets it. the sports Prado regulatory wins body wins is the National Greyhound Racing Club. Under their rules, each track has to employ a vet to ensure greyhounds are fit to run and drug free. The vet at Hackney was Alan Hitchin, a member of the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons, with a string of practices across London. He also claims to have had an offer from Damnia. Danny Damnia approached me at the bar at Hackney Stadium one evening and suggested that I could earn well if drug tests uh, done on his dogs um, disappeared or were not sent on to the proper authorities. Alan Hitchens was astounded by the approach and made an official complaint to Hackney's management in early February. But as Damnia became more and more involved in Hackney, his offers to staff began to turn into threats. Danny behaved appallingly during the time that he said that he was taking over the stadium. In fact, he led most of the staff to believe that he had in fact taken over the stadium and would often tell people that they were going to lose their job because he would be the new chairman. On March the 14th, a Damnia owned dog, Windsor Dan, was found to be 1.7 kilos under its previous running weight by the duty racing manager, Paul Sobel. The odds on a dog depend on its previous performances. A dog whose weight has changed significantly may not run in line with its past form. Under NGRC rules, Windsor Dan was withdrawn from the race. We've obtained a statement by Sobel about what happened next. I received a telephone call from Mr Damnia, the registered owner of the Greyhound, who wanted to know the circumstances. As I explained them, he became very irate and told me I should consider myself fired, then slammed the phone down. Sobel took the threat seriously and left his office. The race meeting only started after a senior manager told Sobel his job was safe and asked him to carry on. Windsor Dan, like many other Damnia dogs, is trained by John Ginger McGee. McGee has won all the sport's major prizes and with Damnia forms the most formidable partnership in greyhound racing. 
Ginger McGee and Danny Damien were perfectly matched. Danny is a big owner, wants to spend a lot of money, wants to win big races, and Ginger McGee is the perfect trainer for that. With a very expensive dog brought over from Ireland, Ginger can do the business and win the big races, and that's what an owner like Danny Damien wants. Top trainer though he is, McGee has consistently had brushes with the Greyhound authorities. He's been hauled up before the NGRC on numerous charges, including assault, dog doping and other infringements of the rules. Last year, McGee was fined £1,500 for behaviour prejudicial to the proper conduct of greyhound racing. He admitted giving a pain-killing drug to a dog so that it could run with an injury at a big race in Birmingham. Later this month, McGee is due to face the NGRC again over charges that a top damn near owned dog, Rabatino, tested positive for drugs at Peterborough in August. McGee claims the dog picked up the drug by licking the paw of its injured kennel mate. Congratulations all round to Hit the Lid, owner Fred Smith and trainer John Ginger McGee. And let's not forget McGee's greatest triumph was winning the 1988 Greyhound Derby with Hit the Lid. The dog's owner is breeder Fred Smith. Smith no longer keeps dogs with McGee because of concerns about their welfare. He believes the industry's regulatory body, the NGRC, has been far too lenient towards McGee. As a trainer, his, his record speaks for itself. I mean, he's been top trainer for the last three years. He's in front again this year. His disciplinary record, he's been found for drugs, etc., etc. And I, what I don't understand is how the NGRC has not taken his case to task, where there are many other smaller trainers who do far less than what he has been found to be guilty of and have their licence revoked. And I think that's a very poor show. Allegations of bribery and doping strike at the very heart of greyhound racing. They undermine the confidence of the punters whose bets are the lifeblood of the sport. But some of the Fleetfoot board members were so desperate to sell the stadium that they seemed blind to Damnia's activities. After Damnia's bribery attempt, vet Alan Hitchens made an official complaint to stadium controller Stephen Ray. On the 10th of February, I wrote to Stephen Ray saying, Dear Stephen, I'd like to report a recent incident to you, as I mentioned to you the other day, that Mr. Damnia suggested to me that a substantial amount of money would be available to me if I lost or tampered with post-racing tests carried out on his dogs. I then wrote to Robert Parker on the 20th of February saying, The response from Mr. Ray has been zero. I cannot understand why your staff seem particularly uninterested in the fact that somebody may wish to attempt to bribe me and then is still treated as a premier owner on the track. Also, I note this person seems to be winning most of the races. Um, I didn't get a response from Robert Parker until the 2nd of April. It says, my own view is that we should not have Danny Damnier allowed into the stadium because of this activity. However, I've been pressurised by Sir James Harvey Watt and Stephen Welton of Henderson Venture Managers to ignore his activities is as he is on the verge of purchasing the stadium and it is thought that if I upset him I may prejudice the sale. How did this make you feel? Well I think it's outrageous. Eric Dinas, the groundsman at Hackney, reported Damnia's attempted bribe in writing on February the 18th. Stephen Ray told him he had forwarded this to the NGRC. Dinas was sacked from Hackney in April. Shortly afterwards he discovered the NGRC had never received his allegations. I can't understand why Hackney never sent the statements. Obviously the NGRC never received the statements and, and you've got to put that down to Acne. You know, uh, why? Obviously, you know, um, they was trying to sell the place and they didn't want the complaints to go in, I presume. Especially if Damley was going to buy it. When you say Hackney, who do you mean at Hackney? Well, the fleet football, I suppose. You know, that, 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 that starts with Stephen Ray um, from him upwards. Alan Hitchens and Eric Dinas also told us they had spoken directly to Stephen Ray about the bribery attempts. But in a statement to the London programme, Fleetfoot denied that Mr Ray knew anything about them. Allegations against Fleetfoot go much further. It also claimed Damnia was given special favours at Hackney while he was bidding to take over the stadium. On February the 5th, two dogs failed the pre-race drug test. One was Gentle Times, a damnier owned greyhound trained by John Ginger McGee. I went to Stephen Ray and told him there were two dogs proved positive with the chromatography testing and that they should not be allowed to race, they should be scratched immediately. 
as the regulations would suggest. Um, he, however, overruled this and said that they should run and that perhaps we should blood test them after the race, and this I arranged to do. How did you feel about that? Well, I think it's quite clear that if uh, there is a suspicion that an animal has been administered any substance prior to race, it should just not race. It's uh, unethical for it to do so, and against the regulations, and of course is unfair to the general public. After the race, Hitchens took blood samples in the presence of the trainers to send for further testing at the laboratories at Newmarket. But Stephen Ray told him that because the correct forms hadn't been filled in, the samples couldn't be sent on. In a statement, Fleetfoot told us, The vet failed to follow the correct NGRC procedure, and therefore the samples were useless. The reason we hadn't got the trainers to sign that they'd seen them being taken was because we hadn't any of those forms at the time at Hackney. Other allegations have also surfaced about Ray's conduct towards McGee. On March the 31st, Hackney staged a special gala night. £12,000 prize money was on offer. Each dog received £100 just for competing. McGee had nine dogs entered, three times more than anyone else. Other owners and trainers complained that their dogs had been left out at his expense. One dog, Tramara Mayer, had recently come close to breaking Hackney's track record. Five McGee dogs finished last or next to last that night and three were rank outsiders with odds of more than 20 to 1. The London programme has obtained a statement made to an internal inquiry by assistant racing manager Paul Illingworth confirming Stephen Ray's part in choosing the entries that night. We went through the selections made making sure that John McGee had enough runners as Stephen had phoned him asking for entries earlier that day. Two of the concerned runners were chosen after I'd gone at 5 p.m. One other runner was changed without my knowledge by Stephen after I'd gone home, and one other was an insisted change in place of Tremora Mayor by Stephen. The board seemed to be completely taken in by Danny and his claims to wealth or access to the money that would purchase the stadium. I mean, we, we were actually told that we couldn't do anything that would jeopardise the deal with Danny Damnia, so we had to maintain a level of politeness towards him, even if we felt differently. I think that they felt that they would get a handsome profit in a very short time. But despite the board bending over backwards to keep Damnia happy, the money didn't arrive, and the deal, okay. like his earlier promises of £200,000 in sponsorship and advertising, fell through. The London program has carried out its own investigation into Danny Damnia's business activities. Our inquiries brought us here to this East End industrial yard where he used to run a business selling vacuum cleaners. It collapsed in 1991. For Danny Damnia is not, as he claims, the respected head of a multinational company. He is in fact an undischarged bankrupt and a convicted fraudster. In 1987, Damnia was convicted on seven counts of fraud at Snaresbrook Crown Court and sentenced to 18 months imprisonment. Charges included obtaining an overdraft from the Royal Bank of Scotland by falsely claiming that his father had recently died and that a million pounds was waiting to be transferred to his account. He also dishonestly obtained a greyhound worth £4,500 from the Greyhound Racing Association who owned Wimbledon Stadium. Damnia has been personally bankrupt for 10 of the last 12 years and officially has no assets. His house is in his wife's name. In 1991, his company, Rainbow Home Care, left their premises near Hackney Stadium, owing the landlords £10,000 in rent. Damnia also had another £10,000 worth of debts, which the official receiver said he had little chance of repaying. According to business experts, it would have been a criminal offence for Damnia to manage a British-based company like Fleetfoot. Under English law, you're not allowed to be a director of a company if you're bankrupt. In, indeed, you're not allowed to own a company. You are allowed to be an employee, but you're not allowed to own a company if you're personally bankrupt. <laughs> Yet Fleetfoot are reported to have run up costs of over £100,000 in drawing up contracts to sell Hackney to Damnia without apparently checking whether he was in a position to complete the deal. Just one call to the insolvency service would have revealed that he was a bankrupt. In fact, when I was having the contract drawn up for the television deal, 
the solicitor advised that we should check the company because he was sceptical about somebody wanting to come in and spend half a million pounds underwriting a television project. I went back to the board with that and told them what the solicitor had said, but I don't think any checks were ever made. When a prospective purchaser approaches a company, it is the responsibility of the directors to check that person out. And that means checking out who they are, who they represent, uh, whether they represent themselves or whether they represent a company, who controls them or the company that they represent. In other words, it's the responsibility of the directors to check out whether there is potentially a real deal there. In a written statement, Fleetfoot said that Damier represented other interests in the negotiations. They refused to disclose who these were. But the London programme has documents which show that Global Finance was the company making the bid and that Danny Damnier presented himself as the chairman. Fleetfoot refused to give us an interview. But the London programme caught up with director Stephen Welton as he left for work. Good morning, Mr. Watson. Would you tell me what checks you actually did in Mr. Madamnia's background? I'm sorry, but it's obviously confidential, and I can't comment on those commercial matters. Did you know that Mr. Damnia is an undischarged bankrupt and a convicted fraudster? I'm afraid I can't comment on those matters. Why did you spend more than £100,000 of your investors' money trying to pursue a deal with an undischarged bankrupt? Well, as you will uh, appreciate, I can't comment on that matter. You've been negligent, haven't you, Mr. Welton? I do not believe so. Fleetfoot not only appeared to have failed to carry out the necessary checks on Damnia, but they also tried to prevent Robert Parker from raising concerns about Hackney with the NGRC. Parker was suspended on April the 14th by Fleetfoot after criticisms of his management by board members. He'd complained vociferously about Damnia to the board. I arranged a point with Geoffrey Thomas of the NGRC to talk about various things that was going on at Hackney. And, I mean, the next day, before I had a chance to go to the NGRC, I got a letter of Henderson um, stating that, you know, specifically forbidding me to talk to the NGRC um, and sort of pointing out that if I did, I'd be in breach of contract, which meant that my contract be terminated, I'd get no compensation and be sort of sacked on the spot. Fleetfoot told us... Mr. Parker was only required to seek board authorization before speaking to third parties, including the NGRC. But it wasn't until June, well after the Damnia deal had collapsed, that Parker was given permission by the board to speak to the NGRC. They've been slow to respond to the allegations at Hackney. Alan Hitchens raised concerns with them back in April, but he still hasn't been asked to make a statement. After the London programme's investigation started, I was contacted by um, Alan Davis of the NGRC, who was going to come and see me and we could discuss various points specifically. However, the meeting failed to materialise and my last contact with him was that he telephoned to say that he'd handed his file over to the Hackney Police, so they were no longer involved. The NGRC has refused to be interviewed by the London programme. Deputy Secretary Geoffrey Thomas said, If I or anyone else from the NGRC were to make any comment at this stage, not only might it be deemed as prejudicial to the police investigation, but would also be considered singularly inappropriate. Meanwhile, McGee, despite all the allegations, looks set to become this year's champion trainer. Damnia is still running greyhounds at stadiums across London and using his company, Middle Eastern Group PLC, to sponsor races. At Wimbledon on Derby night, he presented £2,500 prize money. We decided to ask Mr. Damnier about his activities. Although he was at home, he refused to come to the door. Mr. Damnier, I wonder if you'd like to answer some questions about why you attempted to bribe staff at the Hackney Stadium. The questions about being an undischarged bankrupt, trying to buy the stadium. Despite all the allegations, Fleetfoot last month celebrated their first anniversary with the news that another £3 million had just been pledged by city investors to complete the building of a major new stand. To some extent it's a bit of a party um, and all our investors are here, uh, the banks are here, the Greyhound Press, representatives from the NGRC, uh, people who have supported us throughout the year. It remains to be seen whether shareholders will continue to support a board so easily taken in by Danny Damnier.